Hey guys, we're doing another vlog, but first I gotta shut the door, cause Natalie is trying to record. Bye Natalie. Okay. So, for those of you guys who have not been tracking, we're currently getting ready to move into our new house, which is going to be our new studio. And as you can see, there's so much stuff missing. And there's like piles of games. And, and over here, where the bat claw and everything was, is now just a table. Yes. That is how our house currently looks. But do not worry, I'm vlogging today to answer another one of the questions you guys have asked. So today, the big question, well not today, when I did the video on the, the broken ankle situation and then I did the video on the donkey situation, a common question has typically been, how did you get into comic books? And it's not a very long answer, which is why I thought it'd be a good video to make right now, because as anyone can tell you when they're moving and trying to run their businesses and trying to start a new business and everything else that we're doing, my time is very, very short. So I thought a good, fun, quick video would be how did I actually get into comic books and how did that story go? So that story actually begins way back when I was younger. My dad had a series that was called Armageddon 2001 um, and he collected comic books since he was a little kid. He loved Superman and that kind of a thing. And he had a series called Armageddon 2001. I believe that was the name of it. It's an old DC storyline. Well, it follows the adventures of a character named Wave Rider who goes to the current time and he touches characters like Batman, Superman, Green Lantern to see where they're going to be in the year 2001. Because in the year 2001, apparently one of those superheroes was going to basically kind of uh, become a supervillain, the monarch, and he was gonna like destroy everything. And we, they didn't know who it was. Now, funny story about that storyline, apparently they leaked out who it was gonna be and it was gonna be some major DC character. So it was a last second change around, they actually made the villain uh, Hawk from Hawk and Dove and everyone had to fight against him and prevent him from becoming the monarch. But anyway, that was a storyline that my dad had when I was a kid and he let me read it and I fell in love with comics. The idea uh, that superheroes go on these like crazy adventures and these crazy adventures lead to like crazy things that I could never see in a movie and I could never see in a TV show. Cause you gotta think this is the 90s guys. The closest thing you got to seeing a superhero storyline was a cartoon show. There was no middle ground, there was nothing like that. So that's how it was for me. That's, that was the big thing. So I got really into comic books and I went to my local comic book store and this is right around the time that the 2099 series was picking up. Now I got into comic books but I didn't have an allowance. My family, we weren't like super well off where my dad would just buy me comics. So when I started getting an allowance, which was $5 a week, I would get on my bicycle, ride it three miles and go pick up a comic book. Now I didn't understand the concepts of storylines and monthly releases, so I really wasn't following things too closely, but I do remember picking up Spider-Man 2099 number one. That was like the big thing I got. I loved that book and I loved Azriel. And anybody who knows Azriel from DC Rebirth, the original Azriel in the 90s, not the same guy. That guy was badass. That guy would mass murder people. He was insane and he actually became the robotic clawed Batman for Nightfall. So like, I loved that guy, I, I followed the whole Nightfall storyline, thought it was the greatest thing ever, and I followed Spider-Man to the best of my ability. Bear in mind, I had a grand total of $20 a month, and I had to use that $20 to get as many comic books as I could. And now comic books were like, I wanna say $1.99 back then, so I was able to get a good chunk, but I didn't understand that like, oh, you have to come back and get the next comic in the series very shortly after that. So sometimes I'd miss stuff. Anyway, I was following, I remember primarily following Spider-Man 2099, Spider-Man, and um, the uh, the Azrael storyline, and going into Nightfall and all that stuff, and I was having a blast with it. So anyway, Spider-Man, this is like late 90s, went into the Clone Saga, the infamous Clone Saga, which overall was not a bad story to read. I actually enjoyed the Clone Saga. The problem with the Clone Saga was, that's my, that's my notification thing. It's a Miku. It's a Miku thing. I don't even know if you could hear it on the phone, but I just got a message. Yeah. So anyway, um, yeah, no. So uh, I was following the Clone Saga. I was actually enjoying it, but and this is a problem I think is happening nowadays. So I fell off of reading the Clone Saga because I had to buy too many Spider-Man books. I still only had about $20 a month. So in order to follow the Clone Saga, I had to buy a bunch of Spider-Man books. This cut into me getting Batman books and Superman books and Green Lantern and Flash and you know, I don't even remember, I don't even think I was following anything else in Marvel at the time. I really remember just buying Spider-Man and Spider-Man 2099. So in order to follow the Clone Saga, I had to pick all this other stuff up. So I couldn't very closely follow the Clone Saga. 
and it became very convoluted and very confusing because I couldn't follow all of the chapters in it because I was buying other comic books. Once again, I was younger. I, I want to say I was like 13, 14, 15, around there. Uh, so I didn't fully, you know, like my focuses were starting to shift away. So I was getting kind of burned out on comics and trying to follow the storylines. I was getting to the age where I discovered women, you know, and that was kind of a big pivotal point. And I basically said, Spider-Man the Clone Saga ruined it for me. I couldn't follow that storyline. I didn't have any interest in going out and buying multiple things. So you know what? I'm just gonna stop reading comics. Uh, my brother, actually, Andy, kept reading them and collecting them, but I pretty much swore off comics because of the Clone Saga. I couldn't follow it, and I was worried that like another major plot like that would happen and I would have to ditch other comics or not be able to follow it and I didn't want to be a part of that world anymore. So I left reading comics. I want to say probably about 2000, 1999, around that time frame. Bear in mind, my dates are probably way off or whatever, but it was around the Clone Saga, obviously, because that's what was the big factor for me. Now, when I we jump ahead to uh, me joining the Army, 2005, and I was popping up at a local comic book store and I was trying to kind of follow comic books again, but I was buying trades. I would buy a trade here, I would buy a trade there, nothing major, I would read it when I have time. Wasn't really a priority. It wasn't until I went to Iraq in 2007, 2008, that I got really into comics again because I started buying up comics just trying to read storylines. And I was really into it at that point. But it was hard to follow comics now. Because now, not only did we have 60 years of backstory with everything, but I'd also been out of the comic circuit for at least 8 to 10 years. So I had no idea what was going on, so I was trying my best to follow along, but I was clueless, literally clueless, trying to pick up what's going on. I want to say, like, at the time, Final Crisis was the big thing, so I was like, what? what's going on in Final Crisis? I don't understand, Batman's dead? That doesn't make any sense, you know? So I was sitting there like, oh, I can't follow this. I don't understand what's going on with this stuff. So I read them off and on from 2008 until 2011. And that's what DC announced the New 52. And this is why I love to argue that the New 52 was a great thing because I saw that as an opportunity for me to be on ground level, ground zero of a thing that I knew that I would enjoy, something that I had a passion for, but I didn't have the time to read 10 years of continuity. I was still in the military. I still had a ton of stuff going on. I had barely any little time, any time at all to do anything. And I was getting ready to deploy. So. I went ahead, ordered all the new 52 number ones on the digital service. We deployed to Afghanistan. I was working in a hospital environment at the time. So I read them all while in the hospital. Then having a base understanding of everything, I went ahead and started ordering backstories because now the new 52 gave me a jumping off point. So I started with a whole bunch of superheroes and I fell back in love with the Green Lantern, the Flash, and Batman. Now Flash was a great starting point at the new 52, but Batman and Green Lantern, they had a huge amount of continuity, but the task of reading continuity was easier for two reasons. One, I only had to try and catch up on Batman and Green Lantern. Two, I was in Afghanistan working in a hospital environment with a ton of free time. So I went to Amazon because Amazon Prime would still ship to uh, overseas and I ordered as much Batman as I could. I went online, found a reading list, and I ordered everything since I had left. When I left back in 1999, 2000 time frame, I ordered all the major events and major things that had happened all the way up to the beginning of the New 52. And I did the same thing with the Green Lantern, catching up entirely on Jeff John's run. And that is really what turned me into, from being like a passerby on the comic book world, like, oh, I'll read this, oh, that's a pretty cool thing, I'm a huge fan of Batman, but I don't want to read the book kind of guy, to a hardcore fan who runs out and buys comics. I mean, I'm at a point right now where I have two collections going. We have one for the, the comic online store business that we're trying to start, and I have my personal collection again that I've just started up doing again. So that should tell you right there how much of a hardcore fan I really am when it comes to comic books. So I got back from Afghanistan. I was entirely caught up in the New 52. I was trying to find a good jumping off point for Marvel, and right around that time frame, they realized that this whole new number one thing was really selling, so they started up with Marvel Now. And I was like, yes! I can, I can jump at a starting point for Marvel. Well, it wasn't exactly a clean starting point like the new 52, but I was good enough and I was able to do enough research to kind of get into Marvel full on. And I was even in a worse situation than DC because at least DC my dad liked and that's what got me into everything. So I was kind of always following DC, but with Marvel, I hadn't touched it since the 2000s. Because even my brother who followed comic books that entire time, he followed DC and then the Dark Horse Star Wars storylines. That's what he followed. 
So Marvel was even a deeper dive, but at this point, I had come back from Afghanistan and that's when that second break in my ankles had happened. So I was given the option of leaving. And anybody who's been in the military knows when you are planning for a medical retirement, you basically just sit around doing nothing. So I had plenty of time to read up on Marvel at that time. And I caught up entirely on everything. Now this leads into the channel because at this point, over the course of three years, I had like super caught up on every comic book out there and I had transitioned from casual fan who watches the movies and maybe buys a book or two to full-blown collector fan buying like $50 of comic books a, a month, buying it doubly on digital, trying to track down collectibles and things like that. Natalie and I at that time were doing the gaming channel and we were doing pretty well with it. We were doing like little let's plays. Um, it was it had gained enough traction to equal a part-time job. We were enjoying it. But as I got out of the military, I was getting more and more into the comic book storylines and as the movies were coming out, Natalie was interested in the comic book storylines but she wasn't interested in reading the comic books. She just wanted to know what happened so when we would go see a movie, she would understand what's going on. So I started explaining everything to her and that's honestly how we started doing the Metal Gear Solid complete story series which led to the Assassin's Creed complete story series which led to me doing the comic book stuff. And I started the comic channel just because I had a huge passion for comic books at that point and I knew how hard it was for me me to get back into it after being gone for so long. To be able to jump into a comic and understand what's happening was near impossible at that point. So I felt like making the channel, assuming that it wouldn't actually grow because comic books are very hard to grow on YouTube. So I made the channel with the intention of giving people an option of how to catch up to comic books so that you could be like me and get really into them and start buying the stuff and understanding what's going on and have fun in this community, in this world. And that's what it was. That's how I got started in comic books. And that led to me getting started on the YouTube comic book thing. And now, now thanks to you guys and uh, us having a, 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 like a place to talk about comics and be passionate about it, I think I've gone from collector super fan to like, this is my job. Like I talk about comics all day now. And like this is a totally different progression. I've gone from being a tired of comics, like with the Marvel stuff, all the way up to I now run a YouTube channel about comic books. Um, and fu funny side note, what happened to me with Spider-Man back in the late 90s, I totally think is what's happening to Marvel right now. They're just putting out too much. And if you're not me who buys every comic book and you have $20 to spend a month, how the hell do you know what to buy? You know, it's like Marvel's like, here's, here's 20 books for Secret Empire this month, can you buy them all? Oh, you like Guardians of the Galaxy? That's seven more books. And you still like Spider-Man? Well, he's already got five other books going on and we're gonna launch a new one for you to jump onto. But that's a discussion for an entire another day. Marvel just having too many comic books and people not having enough money to buy them all, which is understandable. Comic books is a very cheap form of entertainment that you can enjoy and that's why I got into it when I was a kid because when I got my allowance, I could go buy comic books. And now how do you do that? But anyway guys, I'm gonna cut this vlog off right here. Uh, just like, it's funny because the house is getting very empty over here. Like even those Blizzard posters, they're all gone now. Now I just have white walls. Uh, I'm gonna do a studio tour over there eventually once the contractors are out because we bought the house and what we've been doing and the reason why you haven't heard much about this is we're building out the actual eligible monster production studios in the basement so that we can run comic story and manga story and we're gonna relaunch the gaming channel to be just fun games again instead of try us trying to like find a way to make it grow we're just gonna have fun with it again like we used to do back in the day for those of you who may know me from back in the day um, we're, we just wanna have fun. Natalie and I just wanna play games again, cut to the funny moments, maybe throw some camera time on there, FaceTime, stuff like that, and that's what we're gonna build for. But we're also launching a cooking channel with our friend at Houston, who is an actual chef. It's completely separate from everything. It, it, we're probably, you're probably not even gonna hear about it, except in these vlogs. But it's another product, another brand we're trying to make. We're also trying to launch the storefront. On top of all of that, the Weekly Pull podcast is growing and we've got more sponsors coming into that stuff. This whole business is growing, guys, and that's why I had to build a studio. But you're gonna know more about that very soon. So let me know in the comments down below the next question you guys want me to answer. And as I get the hang of this whole vlog thing, we'll start transitioning out of my house. We'll start doing much larger vlogs, more traveling. Hey, at least I remembered to actually record something this week as opposed to what I was doing, which is forget about you for like the last month. I swear, I swear, I did not, I, I'm sorry. I, I, I have no excuse as to why I forgot you guys. I love you. It's, I love you all, and I'll see you next time right here on my vlog channel.